Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here to start of a new campaign in a uh, 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 mod called Pride and Fall, which we're playing in the city of Lots. Um, and this is a very weird sort of world. We are the free city of Lots. Um, we have the capital of Lots. I don't know how to pronounce that probably. A little over half a million population currency is Polish Zoty. Of course we speak Polish here. Religion is Catholicism and ethnic groups are mostly Poles, Jews, and Ukrainians. Um, let the dialogue begin. I guess main lore, the year is 2027, the Young, year has gone crazy, the Polish state once flourished, now anarchy and lawlessness uh, is now here. There are several Euro Commissariats supported by the European Union's intervention forces that struggle to survive because of the economic crisis and people's unrest. What, what, made, it hap made, what made this happen? So, um, Let's see, anything else? The elections of 2021 in Germany ended with a victory for the CDU, which was radicalized the growing economic crisis and pandemic. So... Some of the countries where the Eurosceptic movements began to come to power, such as Hungary, Bulgaria, Slovakia, left the EU. So, uh, while under the pressure of the European army, a succession of the Bundeswehr were forced to stay. So, the situation in Russia made the EU's attempts to sway government all the more appealing. Um, so, then, I guess, Putin was exiled and went somewhere else. The reason was being election fraud. Um, so, basically, nothing could stop the outbreak of social anger in Poland when the presidential election was cancelled under the pretext of pandemic restrictions. So, basically, we were attacked... Um, the Polish government sorts of apart after the Polish atomic program ended with a Batuli incident where I think an atomic bomb exploded in Batuli. So, a lot of information. And to thank you to all the devs who uh, have worked on this. So, thank you very much. Uh, let the dialogue begin. So, we're here. And this is the world where we're at. So, this is, you know, Europstadt Deutschland, led by some woman, Ursula. Oh, isn't that like the main armament minister or something like that? Um, protect Euro Protectorat Schlesien. Schlesien. Schlesing Euro Commission, uh, Oberschleich of Republic, West Poland, um, the functional military, Freistaat Kalshubin, Kalshubin, Freistaat Danzig, and then we have the Republic of Russia, even though there is still the Russian Federation, and Lithuania over here, Ukraine, and Poland has basically been exploded. So, it's kind of like an HRE Poland. But I guess we'll begin with New Morning in Old Lutz. The sun rises, and again, this time it's not official. Rubble has been cleared, most of the victims are buried, and uh, the zone made off limits. Now it looks, looks as good as ever, although in this case, uh, the bar was exceptionally low. When the most pressing matters dealt with, we can move on to solving for the problems. This will be a first step in the road to a regional reconstruction. So, oh, two days. Okay. <clears throat> the little things. It was the little things in Lutz that made the guests smile. The rattling and screeching of the trams filled with bored people looking into their smartphones. Cars in a traffic jam on a narrow street honking driven by people looking dead inside. A reactivated, uh, uh vagina shape found bubbling exceedingly and splashing water much to the joy of children walking by it to preschool much to the embarrassment of the caretakers. Full tables in bars and restaurants, people chattering carelessly while sharing food and drinks. Those rushing to work and spouting, sporting some were formal enough to make the onlookers sure they weren't just office workers but office professionals. But you know of it now, delinquents, with enough decency left to resort to enjoying beer on a nice afternoon. A vague demonstration in front of City Hall, consisting of one art school girl, two of her friends, and her how-do-you-do -do fellow kids, aunt, and that one basement-dwelling guy who heard about it on the internet and thought it'd there be a show. Seen through the eyes of a native, these images could seem superficial and banal, but a visitor from the other parts of the Polish anarchy, having seen the city simply functioning with its blood pumping and breathing palpable, could not but help with wish that they could spend some more of the time in that freeze frame of an early 2020s parrot documentary. Seems wounded but not dead, the dialogue begins. No more blood is spilled in Lutz. That is a well-known motto of Sisman Hololnia. Our president and is determined to end the chaos in our Voldoship Vovodship, with the lowest number of calories possible. To do so, he's ready to implement numerous concessions to various factions. Let the negotiations begin. Also, if I'm uh, saying things wrong, because I know I am, please let me know. And please try to correct me as best you can in the comments below, because I want to make sure I, I at least attempt to get it right. So, we're a centrist republic. European liberalism, occupied territories. Uh, local autonomy, what do we have? Militia, city guard, guarding that type of thing. Uh, managed subjects, exile governments. Uh, Hannah Gilpitik. Katazjanya Lubinauer, or I should say Lubnauer, Marek Belak, Belka, and Thomas Zimoch. Um, vice presidential elections. A feat behind a peak behind the curtains. Set of delegations. And starts for What's this one? If we actually want the warlords around us to talk to us, and we'll have to reach out to them first. We'll summon a delegation, including our best politicians, and send them on their way deep in the heartlands of our soon-to-be partners. Getting them to talk about anything besides purely material gains will be tough at first, but they'll come to talk in no time. How big is the focus tree, actually? It's not that big, but the dialogue breaks. 
Today was a yesterday was a great day for our shattered voivodeship. The one and only leader Halonia has shocked everyone with his amazing speech, which contained a very important message to all the citizens of the former Lutsky. It was announced that the talks with other so-called warlords had begun as Halonia had ready to negotiate with every other commander to build a united front. We shall all be undivided in the times of trouble, as did our ancestors. Of course, some concessions have to be made, but it's trivial comparing to the final goal, which is unification by dialogue. Diplomats have been sent, and the city of Lutz awaits until May 2028 for the declarations of of cooperation from the other rebel groups. Clock is ticking. Uh, the vortex of insanity, commonly referred to as a Lutsky Voivodeship, remains of peace, at peace, at least for as long as Holonia manages to appease his neighbors and keep them away from each other's throats. In order to keep them willing to cooperate, he'll have to somehow find a way to bind the tenets of their insane ideology together and bow to the economic and political demands. All the warlords despise each other and seek to receive surprise that it's Lutz for themselves, but ultimately they might agree to cooperate with the cliques, with whom they don't clash as much ideolog ideologically. They will, however, throw hissy fits over each favorable gift for the ideological enemies. As such, it would be extremely hard to work with all of them simultaneously, and might be forced to sever our ties with some of them in favor of those more helpful to our mission to reunite the country. So, and we're down here, of course, too. Um, but we do have the where the bomb went off. Um, Zonia. 23rd of August, 2025. Oh, wow, well, look at that. 50,000 people used to live here. Now it's a ghost town. Huh. Uh, Euro liberal actions. Due to Poland's recent his history of foreign occupations, Germanization, and Russification, Poles have adapted, adopted a very cautious and conservative approach to foreign ideas and cultural notions, which are immediately received by them as invasive and intrusive. We can warn the public eye's image of ourselves through cultural subsidies and development of villages and cities that have been neglected by the previous conservative regime. That's not bad. Rig the bureaucracy. <clears throat> Actually. And documents provided by you cannot be accepted by us as they are not up to the default local paperwork standard included in the Chungus Quagmar chart measurement that, uh, form that just so happens to have been accepted yesterday by the Provisional Institute of Governance and development of the Losinia Doña Sacao region. Ergo, they have been declared null and void, and so did your request to the local transitionary government of Zadupi Dolna. Huh. Crank up tax revenues. A liberal state has to be simultaneously fund tons of projects, subsidies, and investments, as well as the bureaucracy associated with them. And we're slowly running out of funds and resources. Our people have to bite their lip a bit to fend living conditions worthy of a first world state for themselves, thus subsidized agriculture. Boots are to get, but nowadays sell so are the other products and goods, too. But funding our farmers, we can win the hearts of farmers on our lands and at least slightly increase availability of food and farm products. Subsidized public works and projects. The times are hard. People are either struggling with surviving in the next day or trying to keep the battered uh, psyche intact. We should fund some public artists and develop products to make the reality they're living in at least a little bit less harsh and draft for them. Small local artisans who decorate houses in traditional ways, new town parks and attractions, and improve city infrastructure to make their daily commute a tad more bearable. All these things will help our image and provide our people with something to admire in these bleak times, such as artists. There's much to be gained from funding various types of artists in our lands, from loud speaking political caricaturists to small local painters, sculptors, and artisanal artists. Spe depending on who we're subsidizing, we can either discredit our enemies and improve our, the public's opinion about us, or help uh, out small communities and aspiring artists with sharing their art with the world. Oh, that's not bad, that's actually really good. Enforce stricter gun control. Even before the fall, most gun owners in Poland were made out to be weirdos and political radicals who definitely shouldn't be allowed anywhere near firearms, however. Now that every larger settlement is at war with their neighbors, this stereotype became truth. Implementing stricter gun laws and strongly enforcing them in the newly acquired lands will only disarm most potentially dangerous individuals in the area, while some large own stockpile of weapons. <coughs> uh, onwards for a free Europe. Uh, through our mission is to bring personal freedoms and rule a lot of Polish lands, the Poles themselves reject us for perceiving us with more distrust and hatred than ever before, which means that we cannot account on any support from the common folk. The West has also turned back. It's back towards the Polish uh, liberals, not wanting to have anything to do with Poland once... Morawiecki's government, uh, and even the country's populace, rejected the European interventionary corps. So, stand up, people. For cause is just, and we have only ourselves to do the job of the onwards for free Europa. Keep the torch of liberty burning. Um, forest bandits and nationalist bum screwers are trying to, their hardest to undermine our goal of building a full state that's worthy of living in. They sacrifice hundreds of human lives and resources to build their personal kingdoms, found our principles of corruption and oppression, and we, as the bearers of torch of liberty, are the natural adversaries who represent their biggest fears. In the past, we already had given them access to the power once, and we now see the results of that. We cannot let it happen again, so stand up, people. Stand up for your liberties, for the liberties of your daughters and your wives. Keep the torch of liberty burning. Um, interesting. For the past month, we've been hearing tales about a bronze guerrilla campaign against Ukrainian humanitarians in the following brick of the Ukrainian humanitarian mission. However, judging by recently appearing at hearsay, crap has hit the fan for Braun. Now, a small duchy has found themselves sieged down by the newly revived UPA and a Polish Ukrainian Cossack host. Refugees encouraged from uh, the Zezo 
Speak of the city's population simultaneously high organization and second-hand embarrassment from bronze actions and autumn morale, high morale, among bronze loyalists who now claim that they've been right along. Both Ukrainian armies and seem hell-bent on exacting revenge on brownists, and it's unclear whether the civilians will come unscathed from this conflict if more radical party wins the race to capture the city first. May God be with the common folk of Subcarpathia, or for they are the real losers of the conflict. And only our dreams will have not been humiliated. Vice presidential elections? Managing all those ridiculous warlords is a formidable task indeed. One that cannot be accomplished alone, as much as he may not like it. Halloween will have to share power in a vice president. The warlords, along with their own government, will have already put forward the suggestions for the position. We have the final say in the matter, however, and whoever we pick will be eternally grateful to have such close ties with us. Uh, setting out the delegates. <coughs> oh. Body uniforms of protective equipment. Guns. Anti-tank. Resource gathering stuff. We can conduct short-term operations to temporarily and add some additional resources for ourselves. Smoke cans. Steel Museum exhibits. Most military equipment gets its original combat capabilities neutered. Before being put up on display in museums, both a bit of refurbishment and perhaps some modifications to the original form of some of these weapons and vehicles could be both major boons for our army. Smelt cans. Aluminum can't be produced using rudimentary methods, but it can be recycled through simple means. There's a lot of old cans, furniture, cars, and other things that are at least partially made out of aluminum parts that can be smelted and recycled in a free, high-grade material. Plunder railway extractions. Old railways that don't have too much tactical use for us can be instead be utilized by us as excellent but temporary sources of metal and electric wires. Smelt old tires. Rubber and plastic can be mechanically recycled by grinding them down and melting them into a different thing. It's not exactly a very healthy process, but thankfully most Poles have developed a natural immunity to toxic fumes by visiting their grandparents who insist on burning trash in their furnaces or by having to live in Krakow and inhaling Beijing levels of smog on a daily basis. Rob local gas stations. Until the country starts gluing itself back together, fuel stations are our only source of semi-commonly fable fuel. All of those will have some hot dogs available to check out. <coughs> Set up temporary boot-like mines and charcoal kilns. You don't require any sophisticated tools or skills to gather enough wood to heat your home for a night, but it takes more than a single man with an axe to provide enough coal to power even a rudimentary industry. Thankfully, in some regions of Poland, coal deposits can be reached by simply digging in ground with a shovel. So if we ever find ourselves running short on coal supplies, we can open up small temporary bootleg mines for a quick gain of resources. We can also set up some charcoal kilns dedicated to providing smaller quantities of coal for civilian usage and search local junkyards for better scrap. There's a ton of trash lying around that can be reused or recycled by us. All we gotta do is send some scavenging parties to start gathering it. Yeah, government workers picking up trash from the ground might ruin our image in the eyes of some, but hey, no work is a disgrace, right? It's just like those clean up the world days back in school. But we're gonna send out them delicates. Actually, do we, are these guys experienced at all? No, I'm not sure who we're supposed to face. Flower Consortium. Um, we're throwing it on all sides, which is very bad. Uh, let's go here, I don't know. When the decision to organize a great conference was made, Halloween immediately started writing invitations to the leaders of the surrounding warlords. From the diplomacy of the Free City of Lutz, five best, high-ranked, well-known diplomats were selected and sent on their diplomatic mission to the Brotherhood of Coal, Autonomous Troop of ZPH, the Hooligans of Wudzu, Flower Consortium, the Duchy of Elander. The task is to deliver the solemn invitation to the Grand Conference. The invitation reads as follows, Hereby, by the grace of the Lord of Dialogue, Sovereign of Lutz, Sisman Halloween, you are invited to the great conference to be held in the Free City of Lutz. The conference will be devoted to starting the dialogue, bringing peace to the region, and unifying our voivodeship. I know that your business can be opposite to other warlords in the region or even opposite to our business. But if we don't try to work together, it will only bring more suffering, torment, and thousands of deaths and pointless wars that we can prevent. That's why I think it's very important for every bit of you to come to the conference. It is allowed to come with a diplomatic staff of five diplomats per warlord. You'll be under our protection. Cordial greetings. The invitations were written on a single, on, on high-tier Japanese paper, tied with a red silk bow, and then sealed to show elegance, style, and prestige. Let's hope that the contribution that Halloween had put into writing this invitation will not be in vain and the Greek conference will be successful. Have a good trip, delegates. An insider's perspective. A team of delegates on its own is not enough to see what makes the warlords tick, so we'll send some economic advisors over to their lands to poke around and gather valuable intel for us. A little bit of cloak and dagger never hurt anybody, and besides, who would ever suspect an advisor of spying on them? I want to buy stuff, but what's it going to cost us? But like I said, this is called Pride and Fall. It's a demo for, uh, you know, Hoi 4. And it's kind of interesting seeing what we do. Choosing the vice president. Oh boy. Ever since the tragic days of Baluti, uh, it seems like the most of the past, Lord's voivodeship was doomed to spawn into an insanity with various ideologically outlandish cliques securing both large swaths of land and large followings in the region. The victor in the region, however, uh, was a government of the city of Lodz, and his balanced diplomatic approach won the AM. But today, Sisman Halloween, the head of the Lodz government and the min mediator in diplomatic talks concerning the Baluti incident, proclaimed that all of Lodz's voivodeship has been united under a single flag. The newly born state aims to become a fully democratic republic. It takes every single uh, citizen's opinion and worldview in context or account. 
This highly diplomatic and centrist approach made most local and international observers dismiss the city of Lutz as a notable noble state, however, one that was destined to fail. Now that Halloween had united the whole void viziship, however, the Republic's neighbors have started preparing their best orders to engage the state of Lutz on the diplomatic battlefield. Uh, who's actually all around us? Brother of the Cult looks seems really cool. Master of Rhetorics. I like that. Industrious without borders. Crouching Green Revolution, a hidden plot. Uh, pollution at a minor level. Anger at the streets, oh boy. Flower Consortium, led by a guy in a scarf. Necronomist. Huh? Corrupt hospitals, that doesn't so good. Lack of legitimacy. Wave of kidnappings, oh my god. The only thing for certain is that those who get themselves dragged into the vans and never come back. Economic stagnation, armed banditry. Okay, Duchy, uh, Red Regiment of War. She's kind of pretty. She looks a little old. Oh my god. Sorry, I have a thing for blondes. Anyways, uh, Duchy Velander. Uh, Andre Sapkowski. Gwynblad. Confused population, of course. Um, uh, divided supporters. How great. Uh, poor effing infantry. Oh my god. Ravaged country. That sucks, bro. Hooligans of Widzwu. Oh. Squalism. Sells profit. Unfinished collectivization. I should play all these guys eventually. Minority rule. LKS Gorilla. Pitch failures. Constant brawls. And mobile Ark of the Renewed Covenant. Oh, they do have unique books for you. Nice. Yeah, but should try them out. And then we have the Autonomous Troop of ZPH. Some happy guy who looks kind of like crazy. Neo Nationalism. The Grey Lilies. That's cool. Divisions within ranks is not good for them. Partisan Legacy. Oh, the Brotherhood of Cole, too. Yeah, we just saw that one, so. Cool. Uh, I don't, uh. So we have this person, Hannah Gil Pictic. Pictic? Oh, did Oh, no, that's urban activist. Katarzynia Lubnauer. Or King uh, Duda. Mark Belka. Who else do we have? I don't know who these people are. Mazzatrella. Uh. Uh. She already has a role in here. She's an urban activist. Back to fair speed's okay, but. If we remove her, do we get someone else? I don't know. Let's go to Kinga. He's king, so he's gotta be good, right? <coughs> Convene the Lutsky General Assembly. To expedite our negotiations with the warlords, we've decided to push for the creation of a council of delegates from each site. This group of five will reside in the capital district of Lutz to help speed up and simply cu simplify communication between our friends. A small drawback of this is that all the representatives will know about what we've promised the others, possibly leading to some grievances and insiders' perspective. We need information on the surrounding warlords. A lot of economic information as well, but the warlords are rather reluctant to share this information with us. That's where intelligence will take care of it. We'll send agents whom we'll call economic advisors, who are at first glance not different from much from the normal advisors of other countries, where advisors monitor and advise on the economy of a country or region. However, economic advisors sent to us are, are actually uncovered spies, who get a full set of information of a warlords, and then after the end of the contract, they'll return to us in Lutz and provide us with every single information they've taken out, and we will be richer in knowledge as their neighbors are doing in business and economics. The only problem is that they have a basic knowledge of economics and more or less no business cycles or the balances of exports and imports, but they lack operational knowledge, which is so important for intelligence agents. Let us hope our spies don't fail. Hope they don't get exposed. Oh, one day, holy crap. Uh, uh I guess lots among trees? To put things bluntly, Lutz is the only real city in an area. Most of the terrain in the voivode ships are one of the big forests with some real errors sprinkled about. And that sort of environment that scouts rough and tumbles lives without an and guerrilla warfare will prove an invaluable asset in case of any possible conflicts and disasters that might strike us. Previous staff leftovers. Oh boy. Um. Scout commandos. Supply consumption goes down. Uh, consumer goods goes up, which is not good. Finance growth speed. Oh, what do we have around here? Power plant and construction speed. I mean, organ organization. Ooh, that's good to do as well. Um, righteous, righteous, religious minorities. Primacy of trade unions. Uh, not Ash, that last one's pretty good too. Hold on to normality. You lose more political power. Crackdown on consumerism. Pamper the delegations. The ultimate compromise among businessmen. Yeah, consortium out assets, huh? Um, equipment conversion speed. That's not bad. Not terrible. Tax breaks. Uh, Grades of unknown soldiers, not bad for defense, among elves. 
It's not bad either. I'm going to go with that one and maybe a little among factories. <coughs> the Brotherhood of Coal is one of the main, most reasonable candidates for an ally. With the military and industrial might, they guarantee a very powerful position of the body ship and maybe even the other territories surrounding us. Something that prioritizing the senile rider and some boys in the shorts would not be able to accomplish in the short term. Camp with the scouts. The scouts aren't very keen on talking to us in offices and conference rooms for them. Such so spaces are often alien landscapes, trampling the spirit of forest fighters. Ergo, in order to listen to some of their tongues, our leaderships should meet together in a less official setting at a campfire where we can talk with them about important matters while also enjoying some campfire songs and roasted sausages. The way to a man's heart is to his stomach after all. Uh, I guess. Right now, we are a bunch of Euro liberals. I want more stability. I'll go that one. I'll try. Industrial lots. The brother is an ever churning machine, and we wish to keep up with it. We must rapidly expand our industrial potential. We'll cut down parks and forests, uh, sick with a Bulgarian, a Batulian plague, and old run down the hovels to march on over in the future. Oh, build great modern factories never before seen in Lutz by pulling inspiration from the common sense preached by the Zinkiewski. Lutz among zealots. Devotion is a cause, main driving force behind any ideal, the burning embers of a fervor deep within somebody. That's the one thing that hooligans of uh, Widzew have more than enough of. The unending beliefs in the crusade of sorts to reclaim the Lutz as a great cause for concern, however. What if you let them in peacefully? They'll reclaim the new Canaan and will gain a lot of favor with them, not to mention the aid of the zealous ranks of bat-wielding roughnecks. Lutz among spokesmen. Well, the dialogue is important, we cannot forget about our own interests. Lutz has many problems, and more than just five problems, and we'll need to go about fixing or mi mitigating them in any way possible. There's no rush, so after all, we play our cards right. The warlords will solve a big chunk of our problems for us. Lutz among businessmen. Uh, Krasnichi uh, Triumvirate is simply a swimming in money. Money which we'd be very glad to take a slice out of, while they're, while they're not the most popular candidate. Their financial power and close ties with medical services make them a very luring option, especially among the richer folks in our leadership. After all, their expertise in fields like medicine, investigation, and bureau of, bureaus of all things would make them a very useful partner, indeed. <coughs> Happy May. Oh, what do we do here? Military? Well, max factory, safe factory output. Medical equipment cost goes down. Or be it, let's say, 3% more factory output, 5% more. Retention, motorization, trucks. Oh, this is definitely better to do up there. Civilian industries, we can't change that there, so. Uh, oh, we can do Gillette Poland. Melee piercing and manufacturing, huh? Civilian consumer. Oh. It's not bad. Description power and cryptology. Better research speed. Construction speed plus 20%. Wow. 10% but more at factory output. 5% here, too. Obviously 20%. This is better for all. Um, but I do want to do this one first because we want to make as many melee equipments as possible because we're out. Which is not a good thing. Um, among elves. Duke Sapkowski may not have as many forces as the other militaristic factions, but his influence and popularity simply cannot go unnoticed. Thanks to his works and games that were based on them, he gained worldwide fame, taking a slice of that fame for ourselves would surely have our public's opinion and our men's morale. Where the, the Brotherhood's Metalworks? The Brotherhood prides itself as the biggest industrial power on the Void Bishop. Uh, we can dance to the tune a bit and do a tour of their metalworks and factories, promising, appraising their natural economy, respect, resourcefulness, and productivity in every step. The consortium mainly profits off one thing, death. Uh, Rutkowski provides the bodies, Brontel utilizes them, and Skredelski, uh, Skredelski, which, oh my god, Skredelski buries them. Therefore, if we were to let them handle the bodies of persons important to us under government, for example, the fallen soldiers, we would assign a chance to give them the, some free PR and improve their opinion of us and their willingness to cooperate with us. I did a football match. Football hooligans uh, form the core of the Woodsy League's structure. It would be an honor for them to have Halloween to see them kick some poor suckers' butts in a football match. Uh, hold on to normality. The illusion of normality we try our best to hold up is a very fragile thing, and as the times change, keeping up with it becomes more and more st a strenuous task. Our latest adventures of the Warlords have been probably one of the most biggest strains on that illusion thus far, however. Through some gentle web, a weaving, and so a few sensible explorations, uh, we can simply frame these communications as a part of normal post fault policies. Wait, what? What was that? We hear you? Visit Skopkowski's court. Our local, our local book, Duke, likes to confess his newest projects and ideas to us, and it's easy to win his favors, and even a simple, crappy flattery. Therefore, we should pay a visit to the Duke's court to discuss his recent exploits and the matters of both of our states. Crack down consumerism. Lutz has been long called the den of decadence, and its name is sadly not without merit. <coughs> While people like the fall had never happened, with people living like the fall had never happened, telling them that some of the commodities are in short supply is practically impossible, with us having to operate with blend black markets beyond the backs to get them on the cover of the wine from the by Gotchish, 
That is, the Android will become sort of line on the black market. It will barely be what it's meant to be. Limiting some of the highest value luxuries will be stepped in the right direction. Pamper the delegations. Now that we want a, a good look for ourselves in the eye of our soon-to-be allies, and one way to do that is get them to look at lots through rose tinted glasses. The other world's representatives will be given the highest standard of living possible in our city. As, oh my god, as if they weren't getting it done before. The free passes in a spa is the best smuggled alcohol we have, and just about anything else that we can come up with to make their stay here as pleasant as possible. They'll love it here, and hopefully they'll recommend their experience to their peers. Zaburos files to subjugate the northern counties. Uplifting news from the chaos as the city falls into chaos following Starachowchich, Starachowchich, and Sandomiris' successful defiance of the prosecutor's authority. As the Oboro, Zebro's forces lay shattered. As grip over the whole region is just dramatically loosened. Unrest seems to be spiraling out of control, and there are rumors emerging about the paramilitary's commanders refusing to follow further orders. It's why I believe that Zebro has little to no, to no control over the whole situation while we'll try anything to save Sorry, but Clock's hand go backwards. Well, perform a speech about unity and unity. Uh, we might have differences, big differences, but ultimately, we share a goal, and the constant hostilities between ourselves only make this harder to reach. There's no other way to rebuild this godforsaken country than to swallow our pride. Abandon our selfish ambitions and finally learn how to work with each other. If we fail to unite with each other, the concept of a single Polish country might be forever lost. Um, I want to do that one. Perform a speech about unity. Oh wait, 21 of rock weeks, 37. Okay. <coughs> Ultimate compromise. The balancing act we've been showing off to everyone has been intercepted in many different ways. A master struck of diplomacy. A boot looking and so on and so forth. Although few can deny its effectiveness through our inventiveness, we've managed as a crew favors with just about everyone around us and it's about to turn them in for real assurances of good terms between us. Turn the boat to ship. Shady, greedy, and out of touch politicians will kill Poland. People have been radicalizing themselves into reason after years of having to vote for the lesser evil instead of whom they actually want to vote for. If we're to vote a truly trustworthy government, we have to stay in touch with our people. Hello, we should tour around the entire Bolshevik and check on the people of Lutsky and learn what matters to them, uh, the matters do they have at hand. What problems are bothering them? What can we do about improving the situation on this way? On his way, he can meet with the officials of the clique surrounding Lutz to gain not only the people's support but also theirs. Well, let's say just in case. <coughs> What a mess. Holy Cross Mountain. Well, there's that, I guess. Lesson zero. Oh! Holy Cross Revolution. Well, I should have read that then. Holy Cross Revolts against Prosecutorship. Uh, just in case for... Um, hopefully I don't... I hope you can see this, but you never know. Oh, Warsaw Undergrass. Like, just because, like, it might get removed or... Uh, from or taking down for copyrights. So, Kursky, Akiz, David, uh, I have no idea who these people are. I mean, I guess I'm not Polish. Still. Um, Commune of Warwar? What the heck is that? Famine, oh boy. Well. Oh, okay. Front zero. Whoa. Oh, she's kind of pretty. The Waffen S. -S. Um. Okay. A peek behind the curtains. Although some people in Lutz would still attribute the rising food prices and inflation caused by the government's social programs and high cancer rates thanks to the 5G transmitters, huh. the ugly truth is then we're a much worse place than we'd like to think we are. Nationwide collapse of society is a dominant effect, and sooner or later it'll affect us. We should send out emissaries and conduct spying operations beyond our borders to find out what's happening in the region and check for every possibility of our imminent shortages of resources. As long as we make the right decisions quickly, the social order hopefully won't be turning back upside down. And look at on the stage. We may talk, sure, and dance in the same dance of Weisbianowski's wedding, but we're not blind to our core problems. Unlike our populace, that are faithful dance partners, they are blissfully ignorant as to how bad things really are. Their stance must go round and round until we manage to solve these problems. If we break the temple, well, let's not dwell on that too much. The curtains of denial. Under the division, look at that. That's nice. 
Uh, the opulent halls of uh, Lord City Hall were silent. Gel Piatta pulled back the curtains and smiled upon a handful of pros protesters outside. While Lubina combed his hair in front of the mirror, while Lub Nauer looked at both of them nervously. You sure that's a good idea? Uh, Sisman's smile appeared in the mirror. That's just a few kids. Nothing wrong is going to happen. Besides, we might get some nice publicity and some free bottom level feedback and buy them inside and ask them if they'd like some tea or coffee. Once the protesters came in, Halloween seated them behind a round table. I'd like to welcome you to Lutz City Hall. Please state your demands. We'll come right to an agreement, maybe. The organizer was anxious for a second, but then she started explaining something coherently about rights of the same sex couples and married and how they were oppressed and bullied in the schools. Maybe you could talk with them about school and mistress, suggested. Uh, Halloween now, feeling rather uneasy about making any political statements. That way you can start the change in your own environment and then... Oh, it won't work, interrupted the organizer. The bullies are in the gang, they have to deal with... Wait, what? What gang? The amphetamine one, answered the girl. That's kind of sensible... That's kind of sensible of the schoolmistress. I mean, bills and food prices are rising every day, but... Why would you produce amphetamines? Uh, I guess crystal meth is more profitable. This one's monopolized by... No, no. why would you produce drugs at all, cried Halloween. What else can we do? Work? A boy in a dirty hoodie with some face on it joined the conversation. Everything is closing. Those jobs that remain are so poorly paid, there's no point in it. That's true, interrupted the organizer. In our school, ever since Miss Mikskiuska and Miss Derzagon were diagnosed with pancreas cancer, there was no, willing, no one willing to step in. And a few hours later, the conversation was over. All the women was left alone behind the table, covering the bottom of his face with his hands. What would we do when a more serious protest comes? Ah, drugs. What well, can we all agree? Hungry and lost. Well, people may not realize it, but we're running around almost exclusively on fumes. Uh, just about any basic resource uh, a world a state would need, no, we do not have. Many of our shops and industrial facilities had to slow down work or completely go offline for the time being. We have to hurry up. The doomsday clock is ticking. Ah, the five problems. Holy crap! I'm not touching that. Post fall assessment. Guess we're touring. Energy issues. Each day we're tested on the brink of total blackout. Most of our power grids have always been old and decrepit, and serviced by those few power plants that are currently under control. Lotus is a hot light shining in the darkness, not just because it's radioactive, and it can't go and can't go dark. Most discuss discuss possibilities of supplying additional energy. Hungry and lost. The joblessness, poverty, deterioration of living living standards, and what the city is going through is probably the worst that happened to it since World War II. People are starving in the streets and no one can provide them the means to live. Without food, there's no energy, and without energy, there's no production. There has to be a way to break away from this vicious cycle, or soon be destroyed by impoverished and hungry strikers. Let there be light and food shortages. Famine isn't a word set out loud and loads, although the situation is getting dire enough. Some people started to use toothpaste with vodka as an appetizer, and that's a UN approved indicator of a humanitarian crisis. There's very little place to grow food in the city, so we wish to avoid the shortage spiraling out of control. We'll have to reach out to our neighbors for help. Maybe. So 2020. Send out the delegates. When the decision to organize a great conference was made, Halloween immediately started writing invitations to the leaders of the surrounding warlords from the diplomacy of the Free City of Lutz. Five best high ranking, well known. Oh, wait, did we read this one, right? Yeah, have a good trip, delegates. Switching for an energy source. Uh, to put it bluntly, Mr. President, we're in deep crap, said the engineer, wiping sweat off his forehead. Each day, day, number of flats disconnected from the electricity grows exponentially, and we can only be happy spring's coming and days are getting longer. Most public, most of public venues already use emergency generators. Price of fuel grows with each day. Yesterday, I've had to scrap off the floor of seven guys. Six of them, they try to leach the, off the grid on their, own, on their own, and the seventh electrician's face turned pale, installed makeshift water turbine in the toilet. It's only a matter of days until some bloke from the Faculty of Physics builds a nuclear reactor and will have to deal with another zone. Can we just have a sincere talk with them how dangerous it is? Asked Halloween up. Katar Zinya Lubnauer shook her head. We can't let people know how bad things really are. Either we act and tell them uh, what's the solution right now, or, or do we really know the solution? Uh, Zizman rolled his eyes. This electricity palace I see in front of me is uh, Lutz's oldest power plant. Thomas Zimuch actually looked into Halloween's eyes, but it didn't matter. His chimney is like high ma mass of majestic sailing. Ship will carry us out in the storm, and you, miss, you, Mr. President, you will be the captain. The one to bring power like Prometheus through a brought fire to the miserable Greeks. Mr. Zimich, if you please, Marek Belka interrupted. Why would we try to bring all the crypto power plants back to life when we could just easily make a deal with the Brotherhood? They have enough coal and thus enough energy to fulfill all of our needs. Halloween upon it for a while. Fly, fly, ah, fly over the atomic debris, shouted Zimich. Moderate decrease of the five problems effects. The Brotherhood is expect experienced and capable enough to easily cover our whole energy needs, but is reasonable to trust these radical zealots? Repurpose part of the ECT back, back into the Oh, we got one. Lack of materials. The demand for raw materials ex exerted by every production center is, in our case, mostly unmet. Our factories and workshops are empty, and our makeshift su supply uh, mainly comprises scavenged or uh, fo uh, focused second hand products. It's both the health and safety of our populace at great risk, as well as threatens to pull off any symbols of a normal functioning market out of our economy. Resuming traits of the utmost importance, a mutiny is a gun. <coughs> My god, we need more political power. 
Um, this is not bad to do to get more political power. I'm gonna do government contracts next. Financial support granted to us by the consortium has allowed us to uh, sign some brand new contracts with weapon manufacturers. Finally, allows us to buy armed troops with real armored troops with real modern weapons. Our force will look more like an actual army instead of a bunch of reserves with one rifle and hat, a half mag for a five man. But first thing like mirror, overtly oh, optimistic hearsay has now been practically confirmed. The EU commissariats have begun to crumble, with the Polish 11th Armored Cavalry Division being the first part of the European occupational army that completely broke off from the EK government. The leader of the unit, General Piotr Trotek, publicly declared that he will no longer serve under the pathological European regime, and these dire and awful times, we as Poles should stick together and put an end to armies dealing and illegal German settlement in the occupied areas together, Poland has not yet perished, said Tartrek in the message broadcast from the captured radio station in Zagan. So no one the German rule will try to re retaliate, for as of for now, no troops have been organized against the mutineers. Is it because the administration knows their sins and considers the mutiny is somehow deserved, or because the European military is preparing against the unrest in the rest of the commissariats? But this time, there were more than four tankmen. We need political power, my god. End of the Euro commissariats. The EK leaks and the resulting controversy in all of the EU uh, have resulted in a complete downfall of the Iraq's commissariat structure. Schlesien was first to follow, the fragments of the disorganized German forces in Silesia encircled by rebelling Polish factions, which is now cementing the rule over the lands that used to be controlled by the Bundeswehr, but now. Best Poland has begun dis disintegrating as well, as various warlords call their loyalties or loyalists to arms against the EU, rules are being taken over by the bandits, European units fall back to regroup on the German-Polish border, so they can avoid getting swarmed from all sides like how their southern comrades did and the German settlers formed militias to protect their new homes and properties from Polish backwards Schweinhunds. Despite the danger of the complete military breakdown, Poles rejoice left and right as they finally got a chance to forge a new state of other dreams, free from the hegemonies of Europe and the PIS. <coughs> Excuse me. In search of a food supplier. They didn't even care about the Chi anymore in that Chinese place. Decided to live now, filling, putting bags filled with takeout boxes on the table. Damaged by hours of debates, Halloween reached quickly for a bag. Grabbed the first box and dug into the fried rice with a plastic fork. A sharp and somewhat putrid smell filled the hall. What's this? asked Belka, lifting his box up to sniff the contents and see it closely. Fried rice with pigeon, Olivia replied. In a short room, a single slow and loud gulp could be heard, followed by coughing. I'm so glad I'm vegan, said Gil Pikowski. Taking her box out of the bag, why would anyone buy this crap in the first place? It's the last Chinese bar in the city that did not raise prices. Or raise prices, replied Olivia And the line was atrocious. That's the only summons of the old food people can still afford. It does say similar, the Halloween remarked. I guess we should have drawn the line when kebabs out pretending the lamb was actually beef. Have we got any other food options? asked Belka. This is for the envoy, replied Lo Lubnauer, as a large, quite hairy, and quite smelly individual entered the room. Oh crap, Jane, stick out, exclaimed the neckbeard, stomping towards the table. None of those survived in Elander anyways. He continued with his mouthful. We could simply supply you some fresh produce from our estates, you know, meat, milk, meat, and some grains and veggies, and so on. Maybe we got some alternatives, Halloween muttered, looking at the numerous flocks of pigeons behind the window. Yeah, coal, mozzarella, pine cones, replied the neckbeard. You'll be better off with us, although, judging by this, there's nothing wrong with your food. Might be dangerous to trust unpredictable madmen with such a uh, great responsibility. Why not try a more, more dispersed solution? We will depend from now on on dispersed methods of supplying your city, smuggling, buying foods from small farms and companies, or even constructing rooftop farms. Be more expensive, but also make us independent from large play, player schemes. It's not bad, but this gives me more political power, so. That makes us lose political power. Oh, Europe was a nightmare. Beginning to collapse. This is really cool. Okay, cool. Uh, oh. Holy crap. Wasn't this one big old one? Commonwealth of Lower Silesia? Oba Commando Kesselberg? Seems kind of happy. Uh, KGHM? This looks like a business cooperative, yeah. 11th Armored Cavalry Division. Hedonistic Republic of Reno? Wine? Crisis Inquiry, Inquiry Commission? Alba Commando Castleberg, of course, uh, fighting Ricardus Calicius. What the heck is this? Absolutist? Agia Republicus? Civic Faith? Civic Army? What the heck? Free City of Clemson. This is so weird. I like it, though. Thermos? Anti fascism. <laughs> Your ideology is just anti fascist, and that's it. We stand for nothing except anti-fascism. Slovak state. People killing each other. But what else is new? Tax breaks. Business in our city won't simply grow up and out of the cracks and sidewalks of its own. That's why we need to give it a helping hand. Lowering tax would be uh, like a uh, power, uh, 
flower pot full of fresh, well fertilized earth, which will lead to the blooming of the beautiful blossoms of commerce in all across Lutz. So we have a whole bouquet of new companies and enterprises for people to enjoy. God dang, we can't do that one. Well, I guess lack of materials. <coughs> the demand for raw materials exerted by every production center is, in our case, mostly unmapped. Our factories and workshops are empty, and our market supply mainly comprises of scavengers found second-hand products. The this puts the health and safety of our populace at great risk, as well as threatens to pull off any semblance of a normal functioning market out of our economy. Resuming trade is of the utmost importance. Why can't we all just agree? Everyone looks, uh, wants everything done their way. Those who see through the veil push for reform. Those who don't push through the lines get the last cup of coffee at the paper cop shop. Our job of keeping our citizens discontent to an absolute minimum is being stretched so thin it is impossible to take our eyes off of it. While to fix the issues with the social side of our affairs, to say the very least, prevent protests breaking out in the streets. Search for raw materials. Um, you're running this game, please go ahead. Building parks. The Scots' uh, ideology claims that these cities are unnatural and something that's directly opposite of nature, which I love all so much. We have come up with a solution to this issue, however. There's a whole level of unused space or run-down buildings that could, could be turned into new, beautiful parks. Those will be, without a doubt, not only make our new partners very happy, but also pull eyes away from the sore thumb that the Baluti Exclusion Zone. Search for raw materials. It's not like the industry fared much better, I must admit. Marek Belka pointed at a pie chart of dubious quality, made it mostly... Mo made most likely just as something to point out. But right now, when we get and should become an industrial powerhouse in the crap hole of a country, all that went straight into the dumpster. As an isolated urban area, we've traveled back to the towns of cottage industry and 90s, un 90s unemployment simultaneously. We can't build new houses without scavenging through rubble, and we can't print books without recycling old ones. We can't service our army, our public institutions, our. I get the point how they interrupted. Why aren't we importing anything yet? We won't. Won't any of our neighbors uh, like to make a profit? Those loonies are at each other's throats, replied Lubnauer. We have to place our trust carefully and pick the most profitable and sensible option, either where they're going to notice we trade with their enemies and we don't gain crap. Let's discuss the possibilities then, concluded Halina briskly. But the response wasn't really enthusiastic. There's only one possibility here, said Belka resignedly. Consortium is the only estate that, with an industrial base capable of enough and appropriate attitude, we should contact the MASAP. Helena's eyes became glassy. Why can't we simply just get along with each other? For he cried. It's something we can all benefit from. They all know it for sure, no matter how dumb or crazy they are, even if they plan to kill us later. They just have to see that for now the dialogue is the best solution. Just a moment of peace in this godforsaken and pixty of a country. Why don't they understand? He, uh, and in the room fell silent. Gil Piatek approached Helena and embraced him. Don't worry, Sisman. We'll have enough time to fork them over. Just have to wait for some time to unfold. Doesn't hope our project is too much. Treaty. Minor decrease. Minor decrease. I'm gonna go with C. I don't know. Ignacy Mosichi Potion Laboratories. With most modern foodstuffs being filled with the artificial ingredients and preservatives, it might be profitable to centralize chemical production for all industries in a single purpose factories. This also gives us a perfect opportunity to experiment with the chemicals that are not usually employed in the food industry and seek for a new generation of combat drugs fit for modern battlefield. Health risk of whatever we concoct aren't a top priority though. I want to bounce them all. Speech about unity. Rights for the religious minorities. <coughs> Jews, Muslims, Protestants, and everyone else with it exists within our country, and there's no denying it. A motion pushed forward by the hooligans that meant to grant Judaism equal status to Catholicism has spouted into a discussion about broad or tolerance of faith within our state. When the dust settled, it seemed that everyone had agreed to grant equal rights to all religions and beliefs within Lutz. Minuscule civil protection. With no delusions of making Lutz a safe city, we should nonetheless strive to make it as secure and safe as, uh, stable as possible. With Polish police practically disintegrated, the city guard tried to stamp, stand up to this task with predictable results. The formation is incompetent, yes, but first of all, understaffed and thinned out. As a result, crime is rampant, law goes on force, and authority is a joke. For now, we need as many boots on the ground as we can get. Quantity is a quality of its own. Viking invasion every few days. More news about EKW's downfall reaches us today, however. News has been quite unorthodox. Apparently, Pomeranian regional media are informing about a Viking raid on the Kamnen Pomorowski. The Norsemen were led by Adrian Zandberg, apparently referred to as Half Halfdan Sandberg by his men, whom it looks like have finally returned back to the country after his exodus to Bornholm following the conflict between him and the Giro Komosarat's government. After his public denunciations of the EK's inner padlock, Pathologies and shady deals ultimately resulted in his arrest under a police raid on his house. Zandberg made a speech on how not even the EU is able to save the failed concept that is Poland, and then in order to rebuild a respectable state, Polish identity as a whole needs to be replaced with a more noble Nordic one. What the heck? 
Oh. Lizard Union. Free city of Gdansk. Huh. Wait. The Tonisa Odenstadt. What the heck? The Hockmaster. Um. Okay. Fortress of Malbork. Why can't we all just agree? The situation in our beautiful city isn't very well. In this dire town, plenty of people have become selfish, caring only about themselves, of course. There's natural behavior in the period of crisis, but this can't help improving the overall situation. Sometimes turmoil begins to rise when the electricity supplying it takes a break. Sometimes it's all about the last pack of coffee. Spears of Lutz worry about growing unrest and how unhappiness among the citizens. Well, what can be done? Can't you see we are all in this together? Striking workers. Rising prices, decreasing quality of life, slacking social security, and crippling lack of supplies all contribute to a huge unrest among the working population of Lutz. The tradition of lackluster workers' riots enforcement of the pre-fall of Poland still did not help. We risk another 1905, but this time the revolution is quite likely to succeed. Dialogues have away the to solve this problem, but we must apply it with the utmost care lest we wish to spark the power kit. The eternal procession sets off. Oh, there's that one. I guess Godspeed. Because this is a lot of reading. Oh my god. It's like almost worse than TNO. Here they come, our eagles, uh, guardian angels, the armed hand of Lot's government. Uh, our city guards, please welcome them with outstanding, outstanding ovations. A uh, big one for our Zimich's enthusiasm waned as soon as officers enter the hall. Their faces were pale with dark circles under their eyes. They walk slow in the uniform slovenly best. We wish we could resign, Mr. President, said one of them, scratching his head near his receding hairline, but there is of no one else qualified enough to take her place. Truth be told, every guard or policeman is worth his weight in gold now. We're barely enough to keep the most frequented parts of the city safe, as for the suburbs and the countryside. The gang often have better weapons than us and then added another. Some people even love to join them simply because they pay better. No more of it. Belka slammed his fist on the table. We've got to raise our numbers by any means. Emergency, spending, lowering standards, whatever. Just get some boots on the ground and we'll learn the ropes in time. We might be failing, uh, falling in a downward spiral there, Gil Patek remarked. We might not have enough quantity to transform into quality. We should reach out for some experts. And where would you find them, then? Belka asked mockingly. You just can't find them, like in the forest. Forest, muttered Halloween. That's an idea. Scouts are masters of light forces. Maybe they'll be help, 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 they'll be willing to help. To scrap the requirements increase the budget. Who needed political power? So the seeds of dialogue. <coughs> Not everyone in the government is fully on board with Halloween's dialogue. It's hard to blame them really, so far Lutz has been in an everlasting downward spiral, and is now just barely keeping itself afloat. But surely enough, if we simply talk to those who don't agree with our peaceful rhetoric, uh, we, they will come around. And if they don't, then they'll wish they had when they're looking for a job. Strong, we warded you. Well, okay then. Striking workers. Today I broke out, the greatest struck in load since uh, June 1905, hungry, poor people. We're sick of all the situation came out on the streets to protest against the surrounding reality. They have nothing else to lose and everything to fight for is a poverty force them to try to change current conditions of their lives. Halloween is devastated as he has no idea how to cope with these radical circumstances. His advisors presented to him two ways of dealing with the crisis. Either he calls for support to Wizzy with respect or a request for help with peacefully dealing with the workers, or he orders to end the strike forcefully. The first option catches attention with it being the one without casualties. But surely make Lutz more dependent on our neighbor. Second option to ensure that no one would revolt against our rule, but would make our authority built on um, fear and cruelty. Is it not a, in the dialogue way? Uh, Halloween punishes what to do. Send the diplomats. People have to learn that it is our rule is the only true way to authority, even if it's a hard way. The city will survive. We found a way to meet the, every basic need of our society, although the balance is fragile. All the, at present, there is nothing more we can do. Everything else will be fixed in time with the further implementation of the power of dialogue. The five problems of existence and their effects fade away. Let's hope forever. So the seeds of dialogue. One morning, Halloween got up, pulled on slippers, and went out to the balcony to get some air. I looked at the lots of his dreams. No one is attacking anyone. People are talking in peace. Some will go to work, and some just come home from work. No strikes, no riots, no breaking the law. Full harmony, peace, dialogue. Halloween looked at the, all this, even shed a tear. A tear happiness, this time not over the Constitution, but simply over the side of a beautiful morning that has not been long since the breakup. He ate breakfast and did his morning routine and went into the bakery to get some bread. Walking down the street, he did not see a single poor homeless or hungry person. All passers-by seemed content with their life. He even saw a group of teenagers who politely helped an old woman cross the street. I also met a policeman who, like an American movie, stopped at the station to eat a donut during the break. After a short conversation, it turned out that the crime rate had dropped dramatically even in the most pathological districts. No one steals from anyone because everyone is everything. No one wants to kill anyone. People stop breaking the law. What happened? Halloween said goodbye to the policeman and went on. 
When Halloween entered the bakery, he heard the sincere good morning and saw friendly smiles of people whose problems had been solved. He remembered those motivational words from one of the speeches, Never let yourself be told that Poland is doomed to weakness and poverty. At least Lois, as you can see, is not. At the bakery, he had a chat with the saleswoman about her job, life, and general satisfaction. He heard that everything is fine, there is enough money to live on and then save on. The saleswoman also thanked him warmly for what he had done for the city. He replied that it was not only his merit, but all of the citizens. We must finally understand it, so it started Halloween. Our future and citizens, the future and our children are our our future and the future of our children are shaped by our actions. He laughed and walked the streets of the city, happy as never before. Perhaps there's still a chance for Poland in, for 2050? I don't know, man. People killing each other. The third Polish Republic. A look into the horizon. Today we rise from the hardships of the stars. Today we enter a new era of planning and another step on the doorway to heaven. Or stairway back to heaven. Today I declare this uh, nail factory open. Yeah, it's Halloween. <coughs> Could hide people up over anything, including an opening of the unreliable... Our unremarkable shack like warehouse where a bunch of scavenged machines cast out nails of molten and metal stream. Connected to a founder, this was the thing was supposed to bring about nails of all sizes for construction and restoration detail. And guess what? That was progress. From scavenging to manufacturing to unified Poland to an entire new way of manufacturing. Whenever he was out of the city by himself, he would take a closer look at Lod's citizens and at the city itself. He wanted to contrast the experience of being there in the thick of it with his usual political affairs concerning Lutz. Surveying the streets and with the events taking place on them allowed the president to better understand the problems his people were facing. Because of this, the feelings that were usually with them during the trips to the city were those of uncertainty and concern, but today was different. He realized that today he had seen far fewer symbols of political polarization than usual, not only that, when he looked towards the horizon he could see the smoke coming from the chimneys of factories and power plants. Even the streets themselves seemed more lively and the people happier. At the moment, he finally noticed that his hard work was paying off. It wasn't just about securing survival for the citizens of the free city. Another duty which had rested on Halloween's shoulders was making sure everyone finds common ground within the dialogue sphere. After years of work, it had finally looked like the foundations for a dialogue-driven Poland had been laid. Even at the very moment, he could see that civil discussion was prevalent. So many people participating in the noble art of dialogue despite the differences put aside their selfish desires for the sake of the greater good. And it made him feel very different emotions from before, pride and relief, but he knew pride to be a false friend, all that Poland did ever since the fall. For his own Halloween had greater plans, and was well aware that if he was ever to achieve those plans, he'd have to keep on looking forward, because resting on his laurels would undoubtedly doom his government and the people who had trust in it. He cannot allow that, and so on, with newfound determination, he promised himself never to doubt his mission, and leave the system of lots and eventually pull him towards a better future. This country will be a phoenix from the ashes, as well as the city. Halloween as well, doing the impossible time and time again, will forevermore accelerate this country from humbling nail cost nail cast beginnings to be the stars, but first, we'll have to produce bullets in a similar way. We haven't failed the city and we won't fail this country. We got all that stuff down, so we gotta finish this side too. Uh Primacy of Trade Unions. Trade unions present in Lutsky have been abominably low just about everywhere. We see the issue with that, or well, we saw when half of our workers had a general strike against us. To prevent such further issues, the hooligans have reached out to us with an offer to help spread awareness of active unions and establish new ones where they were lacking. <coughs> Removing the Lutsk Alaska Airport. As a token of appreciation, we've decided to help out the Brotherhood by renovating the Air Force Base under the city of Alaska. Their workers are somewhat unsurprisingly over a very stretched, where their ethos of break neck industrialization acting like a vacuum for skilled engineers. A void we can fill with some of our own. This will not only be seen as a great act of kindness on our part, but also supply our alliance with a fully operational airport ready for all of our military uses. Scout Commandos. The ruthless upbringing and training routine in the scouts' rank has caused them to be highly disciplined and skilled soldiers. We can adapt some of their methods to better teach our own commandos how things are done. On top of that, older scouts could be in integrated into our special forces ranks as leaders and teachers. Tact breaks. Business inner city won't simply grow up and out of the cracks and the sidewalk on its own, but that's why we need to give them a helping hand. Lowering tax will be like lowering a uh, flower pot full of fresh, full fertilized earth that'll lead to the blooming of beautiful blossoms of commercial all across the world. Soon we'll have a whole bouquet of new companies and enterprises for people to enjoy. And I know I read that earlier, my bad. Wizarding schools. It's said that any technology advanced enough is undistinguishable from magic, or even maybe it's the other way around. Anyway, it's about time we get back to education and start creating a new cast of elite thinkers and engineers to help our new friends. Send the final letters. The conference's day is nearly upon us and there's no time to wait. Letters and delegations have been sent. Soon we'll see the fruits of our labor. We'll prepare the finest reception for all the leaders. A banquet of the best restaurants, comfortable lodging, the most expensive hotels, and any amenity they could imagine for the duration of their stay. We're all crossing our fingers, hoping for the best. Hold the great conference. And hey, we've all been waiting for is come. The great conference of the fate of the Lutsky hangs in the balance as everyone completes the final. Uh, oh boy. Uh, final conference. Uh, final preparations to host other warlords, heads, estates, and other ministers. We've come to this far and can't afford to trip up now. I'm um, also, everyone's trying to kill each other here, including the autonomous troops of ZPH, CHP, and we told them to stop it. So. Yeah. What's going on here? Uh oh. They're killing each other here, too. Uh. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. God dang it. Stop killing each other. God dang it. Okay. Woo! See? We stopped them. 
Because I still want to do a tour around the village, village ships, too. No, stop it. We told you already to stop it. Well, the Greek Conference. The Greek Conference begins. Um, so it has begun. The Great Conference, the diplomatic staffs and leaders of all warlords, invited warlords arrived in Lutz. The banquet hall where everything will take place is already prepared and cleaners, waiters, cooks, and other employees will serve guests during the conference are busting everywhere. There's also a stage with a sound system on which guests and the organizer, Simpson Halloween, will speak. On the tables are appearing the most exquisite dishes and cuisine from around the world that Robert Mal Malkovich or Mad to guests would not be ashamed of. The warlords have arrived and diplomats are down at the table. They do not hide their admiration for the organization of the entire meeting. However, they do not come to eat. Behind the curtain of the stage, Halloween adjusts his shirt looking in the mirror. Finally, says Miss says to his assistant, the dog will reach its zenith and will reunite the provinces in peace. Is everyone ready here? he asked. Yes, Miss Halloween. The guests have already arrived and are waiting, replied the assistant. Thank you. The time has come to start this beautiful evening. <coughs> Excuse me, Halloween. Came out from behind the curtain on stage. With a smile on his face, he greeted the guests with a gesture of his hand while the audience cheered him loudly. When the applause died down, Halloween went to the microphone and gave a speech. Welcome to everyone gathered at today's conference and thank you for coming. We're gathered here today on a matter of the utmost importance, on dialogue, for peace in another region, and for cooperation or future in our unification. Hope that we will be able to reach a compromise through talks and achieve total dialogue. The crowd started clapping. Halloween then continued. I have some suggestions and offers that I think you'll like. Of course, I will then listen to your answers, counter offers, and arguments. You looked partly across the room, but for now it's time to start the great conference. Let the dialogue begin. Stop killing each other, god dang it. I like this, and it's a nice animation too. Oh. Oh crap, we have an even more. A partial success of the conference. Um. This is probably gonna go really badly. So, uh. Well, that could have gone better. Seems that despite our best efforts, we managed to stow away. So away only a few of the warlords are side, which means only one thing, wars on the horizon. We're wholly unprepared for a conflict at this time, having put all the resources into ensuring this dialogue success. It was all for nothing, it seems. Now we have all uh, have a, a confused population, and even more confused army. Now we just scramble to fix whatever we can right now. So, uh, I'm going to end the episode there. It's gone on long enough. This is a lot of reading, and I'm not sure what else we could have done. So, uh, where are those free city lots, though? If you enjoyed the video, though, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. See you tomorrow. Also, see what else we can do. With trying to make sure not everyone kills each other, but it seems like we're going to end up in a war as well. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.